Welcome back in, everybody, for another episode of the Vitamin C's podcast, proud part of the CLNS Media Network. I am joined by my co-host and partner in crime, Wayne Breezy Brown, and we're just checking in. It's officially the offseason for the Celtics. We know we kind of had our post-mortem episode. Stinks, uh, tied up 1-1 right now in the finals between the Nuggets and the Heat, but... <laughs> It sucks, I love that. Bro. It sucks. It, man. it sucks. I'm sorry. That was mid intro. I didn't mean no, for you to stop. No, I love that's fantastic. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's it's nothing good. I was um, I was talking to, <laughs> to a friend the other day on the phone, and I was like, "You have no idea how much I wanted the Celtics to keep playing until until the very 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 end. Like like even if we lost Game Seven of the finals, yeah. like we wouldn't be sitting here having these type of conversations. But it's not how the cards folded for us. And so here we are, man. It's a lot tough, tough time, tough times. <laughs> yeah, it's tough times. I think is probably the best way to put it. I think putting it lightly, but overall, uh, things seem to be trending in the right direction. So Brad Stevens had his end of year press conference. Usually, that's what the kind of the GM or uh, coach might do at the end of the season to just kind of put a bow on everything. And he fielded a lot of different questions, talking about the team, the staff, um, the coaching, how things kind of unfolded in Game Seven for the Celtics in terms of their offense and everything like that. And all sorts of different conversations concerning like, Hey, was the defense the issue this year? Was it the offense? And what it kind of watered down to at the end of the day with it, what I took away was Joe Missoula for sure is not going anywhere. Brad Stevens made that abundantly clear, which is cool. I, I don't think that he was the problem. I do think that the coaching staff was an issue because there was nobody there. Um, Admittedly, Brad Stevens said as much, talking about you know the staff being limited, um, losing people. Uh, they lost Damon Stoudemire midseason, and they didn't replace him. He also said that they did try to replace him midseason, but things just didn't line up right, which explains Steven Silas being around the team so much. Uh, the both of us have talked about this before, but Steven Silas sort of seemed like he was going to be with the Celtics or was already officially with the Celtics. Now he's going to be the top assistant uh, with the Detroit Pistons, who paid. Monty Williams, I think, was the largest coaching contract in NBA history and has got some incentives laced in there. So there's a lot of people being hired left and right. I I don't even think we talked about it. I can't remember if it's happened since we ended up having the last episode, but Nick Nurse is coaching the 76ers. Um, Who else has been sliding around? There's a couple other ones. I just losing track of it. Yeah. uh, Frank Vogel's with the Suns. Vogel's went, yeah. Yeah. I thought Vogel would be, to me, I thought Vogel would be a perfect defensive piece we could have added from a coaching perspective because Mm -hmm. I do want that identity to come back I do feel like you know that was one of the things that the Celtics uh kind of straight away uh you know toward mid mid midseason we kind of started to see the defense kind of lackluster at times and they were just trying to put up as many threes and points as they could to blow teams out so I'm hoping we get back into that mentality because the last show we did you know, we heard Malcolm Brogdon say it, you know, defense at the end of the day, man, I know it's cliche, but it just wins championships, man. And if you can buy all in on a defense, you can force turnovers, you can create buckets and, and transition. It's just easier play uh, for your offense to get points. And so um, I'm hoping they find a way to get back to that. But it won't be with Frank Vogel. That was the whole point. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And I think Vogel probably at the end of the day wouldn't have taken an assistant role. Yeah, so I think that's the tough part. Backwards, yo. I, I mean, Doc Rivers is floating around, if I'm not mistaken, but there's no way. Again, I think that's a guy who probably would sooner just sit by the sidelines. <laughs> figuratively. For head, right. Yeah, and, yeah. And figuratively would sit by the sidelines. Because you never know when something's going to open up. I mean, there's sometimes there's these big hirings that just don't pan out. The big one I think of is, I think it was like Nate Bjorkson. Um, he was a top assistant with the Raptors. He was supposed to be this big get. Uh, for the Indiana Pacers a few seasons back, he he didn't even, I don't think he even lasted the season. He ended up getting fired, and it was kind of a big deal. Lost the locker room early on. Just not a good attitude. So I, I wouldn't blame any of these other guys sitting out. I'm happy that a lot of these guys got gigs. Uh, obviously, there was a lot of talks of guys getting fired you know, incorrectly and then getting coaching gigs. But concerning the Celtics stuff, they are losing a lot of guys. They've lost yeah. a couple. Um, they ended up losing Ben Sullivan. Ben Sullivan's going to be going to Houston to join Eme staff. And that's kind of where this exodus has been going. Um, Brad Stevens said in his presser talking about 
bringing in a coach with experience, um, specifically probably like a player's coach. And he wanted to add at least one or two more assistants. So far, uh, they added Sam Cassell. And I think that's a big get. Um, Huge get. Huge get. So Sam Cassell originally was with the 76ers at one point and ended up being, I think, with the Clippers as well. And had been in consideration a, a little ways back before they brought in Ime, I want to say, that they were looking at him as a potential head coaching candidate for the Celtics. And ended up not going with him, but now he ends up back with the organization, won a championship here. Um, so he's got roots here. And I don't know, I, I like the hiring. And I think in terms of a guard perspective, he's going to be great developing some of these younger guys, especially you look at like a guy like J.D. Davison, who's just like a raw prospect. You know, he's a guy who he ended up helping uh, develop was uh, Tyrese Maxey. Yeah. So I'm interested to see what he can do from like a coaching standpoint. Yeah, and and the best part is, I mean, he brings you experience. He's a champion, right? He's a point guard, and that, to me, I feel like that's one of the areas where I feel like the Celtics just don't have like that true, you know, typical type of point guard that you know we feel like we need to run the team. This is not a shot at Marcus Smart. To me, he's definitely a natural too, but he plays the point very well. But just having a guy come in here and 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 just giving them, you know, a a veteran like you know, I've been here, I've done this. You guys, if you you know, you choose, you can learn from me. I'm good at developing these young guys, and I think it'd be really good for the team. Sam Cassell's former Celtic, got a championship with us, and I just think that's going to help out, especially in that area, you know, because our point guards. And at the end of the day, I feel like if you can get more scoring. Uh, and and better point guardsmanship. I made that up out of our point guards. I think the Celtics <laughs> will find a way to be all right. You know, depending on how they they tend to go with the bigs this this upcoming season. So I like the hiring of Sam Cassell. I always thought he should have been here anyway. Uh, and I'm glad that he chose to come back to Boston. Yeah, I'm definitely happy that they're bringing back somebody with familiarity with the organization. I think that's huge in terms of like what you're trying to do in building a culture. And I think Sam Cassell was such a huge part of that team. Uh, back in 08, kind of unsung in a lot of ways. But you add veterans like that to your roster in terms of like your bench and stuff. And I mean, they tried this before. They brought back, uh, they had Evan Turner on as kind of like yeah, an I unofficial assistant. And I mean, we'll see if they do anything like that. I know we talked about it a little bit before we hopped on. And obviously, rumors swirl X, Y, and Z. I don't know how likely this would be, but talking about Rajon Rondo uh, another, potentially coming on. Another person I wouldn't mind. I mean, you know, you're getting we have to me, we haven't had a point guard since Rondo, like like a natural point guard to me since Rondo. And the funny thing is, remember, Rondo wasn't much of a shooter, but he could get to the basket. Right. And so I feel like just bringing him back in here uh, from a coaching perspective, him being an assistant type of a coach, again, can work with the point guards room, those younger guys and even some of the older guys, you know, maybe help give show them kind of like how his vision usually is on the court, and then they can kind of see it in a different light. I mean, don't get it twisted. Didn't our, our coach play point guard at one point in college against? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But but I don't think he has that vision. So I like, think about the two people. If Rondo does choose to, to come to Boston, if they go out and hire him, you're getting two former point guards with that vision. And I feel like that's what we're missing because you're asking Tatum to be, the, to be the visionary, which is fine. You're asking him to be the visionary, but there's times I want him to play off ball and just do the damn thing. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? And so I never want, and I love Jalen Brown, I never want him to be the visionary. I don't even want him handling the ball. I just want him to score. Like, do do what you do off ball. And Marcus Smart, this can even ramp back up his defensive perspective uh, if he's able to get some of his So I like the rumor about Rondo, and I really love the hiring of Sam Cassell. Yeah, with Rondo specifically, I think he's just a brilliant basketball mind, right? That's the mind. That's, the, I that's think my point. The funniest thing was hearing the stories about him when he was still playing. I want to say it was when he was with the Lakers, and they were going against the opposing team, and he was calling out their play calls. Wow. And then there was another one where apparently like a coach was saying uh, was didn't have any more plays to go to, and he was like, 39, 39, like, run, play 39. <laughs> and Rondo looked wow. over at him and said, you don't have a play 39 because they knew the entire, <laughs> knew the playbook. entire playbook. And that's kind of like what it's like, right? Because both from an offensive and defensive standpoint, Rondo was brilliant. He was a very, very good defender. Very good and defender. In, in terms of a playmaker, too. So, you know, 
if you were to go out and get them, and I don't know, there's a whole other moving parts with that in terms of you want to make sure you're bringing a guy who's going to help the organization. I think he's got that ability to. He, obviously, I'm going to have to address it, but like the, the off the court stuff with him um, is pretty serious. Uh, I'm not going to touch that with him full pole right now, but just from a basketball perspective, mm-hmm. he's a, he's a hothead and he's stubborn and can be abrasive. Um, that's part of the reason why I liked him. And I don't know. I Rondo was one of my favorite players when he was playing basketball for the Celtics. So, uh, I wouldn't hate it, uh, in terms of just like a basketball angle. Uh, again, it's just rumor and hearsay until we actually hear anything else, but he was at that. He was at the last game. I thought that was pretty cool. He was wasn't he with Pierce and them? Like he was, I think so. I yeah, think like right. I think. And why not hire Paul Pierce? Well, since we had it, like, I think I think well, he's got to want it. He needs to want to do that. And I think there's also, I got there's you. a difference between having like a tie to the organization versus like being being I like a basketball mind. And I think like I I think if you were to like have Pierce for, do anything like a player development coach, yeah, for in the terms culture, of like, bro. Just just like yeah, I think that's yeah, actually a great that, angle to that, it's the culture, that, right? That would be the role. Hey mm-hmm. man, I just need I need the culture piece added because like you like he knows how to win, right? He takes big shots. He can he's the only person I know that could get hurt in the game, come back and drop 34. Like, like the only person I thought Tatum was going to do that in game seven. I thought we were going to get a little Paul Pierce moment, but unfortunately that was an ankle. But no, I'm just saying for like for the culture, man, just having those guys around the room. Like, you know what I mean? And uh, I wonder if that's something that he would be interested in and or if he's one of those players that the coaches will call in just to have him kind of give you like one of those type of pep talks, you know, one of those days just to bond with the team. And things like that. So I don't know. I just I'm just mentioning names that I feel like would be great culture fits for the Boston Celtics. Because once you build the culture, see that, see that is the key, really, to championships. You build the right room to where the players trust the players, and 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 things like that, and they feel like they can go to the coach. And don't don't get it twisted. Coaches can be stern as their job, but. At the end of the day, like when the culture is set, man, and everything just seems comfortable, I mean, that's when guys be run through walls and do crazy stuff. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm hoping that's something that we see a little bit differently uh, this upcoming season. Yeah. And I think that might have been something that was lacking from this unit overall. You know, there were issues with execution down the stretch. I mean, they fell into a 3 0 hole in the Eastern Conference Finals with potentially one of the easiest paths to a championship in a really mm-hmm. long time. Small I mean, you, you, you didn't have to go through the Bucks. Obviously, you went through the 76ers, and you made that harder than it needed to be. I mean, there's an entire possibility where James Harden ends up leaving Philadelphia. Who knows how he takes the Nick Nurse signing? He might stay. He might go. But there were already rumors before anything happened with the coaching situation there uh, that he would be going back to Houston. So, the East is going to change a little bit. You never know what the Bucks are going to do. Um, they also hired a new coach. I think it was Adrian Griffith. I want to say was the guy they hired for coaching. Okay. Um, but while I'm on the subject of the Bucks, um, you had Charles Lee also get mentioned, uh, connected to the Celtics. Um, and this wasn't before the Cassell signing. This was after it. Um, so apparently, you know, after hiring um, Sam Cassell, uh, Charles Lee was someone who that they are eyeing at. He's been a longtime assistant. I know that that situation is far from over because he's been linked to a couple different head coaching jobs, but those are starting to dry up pretty quickly. Um, I don't know if he'd be open to staying in Milwaukee. Uh, I think he went out for the head coaching job and didn't get it there. So there's a whole possibility where he might want to leave that situation for a fresh slate somewhere else. But I I don't know what your thoughts are. I don't know a ton on Charles Lee. I just know that he's particularly um, respected and has been an assistant for a while. So it could be a guy that is waiting for the next opportunity. But if the Celtics are eyeing him, I trust their judgment on this. And I'm sure that Joe Mazzulla some, like somehow is having some kind of feedback or influence on this hiring process. So I wonder if like they're vetting these guys and you know getting to know them a little bit more before putting pen to paper on anything. Yeah, I don't know much about him either. But um, and, and I'm hoping Joe is in the process of this. I'm, I'm hoping this is not just a Brad thing. I'm hoping they're sitting down with the head coach and because at the end of the day like it's the head coach's vision and then it's the assistant's jobs to kind of like get along with that vision and you you know what i mean and so 
Like, I'm hoping they're finding a way to, to mesh with these guys that they bring in. But I'm with you. Whoever they bring in, I'm sitting back and I'm just going to trust. I'm more concerned about Jalen Brown not re- uh, signing the extension and things like that and, 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 and getting down to the nitty-gritty of the team. But I know it starts with coaching. Joe needed help. It was clear and present danger that he needed the help. Unfortunately, the you know the well ran dry, and it was what it was. I'm not saying that's why we lost, but imagine if we just had that. Imagine if he had that assistance. That's all I'm going to say. It, it, yeah, it'd be a little different outlook. But um, I'm with you. I'm trusting the team, the organization on on getting that fixed in that front office, getting that taken. And then it, it comes down to what are they going to be able to do with the team, which is what we're going to be talking about for the next several months. <laughs> and that's the rough thing about the off season is a lot of it's just tackling whatever news comes our way. I mean, fortunately, Brad Stevens was pretty transparent. Um, he didn't give total details on everything that was happening. Um, but in terms of having conversations with Jalen Brown, he said, this is verbatim from the quote here. Um, I've had nothing but great conversations with Jalen. Um, We want Jalen to be here, and he's a big part of us. We believe in him. So saying all the right things publicly, that gives you indication. And then, of course, there's the rumor. You sent it to me. I'd seen it before. But, you know, uh, Greg Hill from, I think it's not, is it EEI or Mm, 98.5? One of the Boston Radio. Basically saying um, Jalen Brown has bought a um, a condo. uh, Yeah. What is it? It was a side-by-side condo in uh, in Seaport. You're and right, Seaport, Seaport, I think, is Seaport. Seaport's one of, uh, I think, where one of his stores is. So, I mean, okay. I don't know how close it is to uh, the juice store, but he uh, he bought a condo. And I I mean, I, I just saying when you when you buy real estate, uh, you know, it's just not something, you know, you, ah, is Seaport a place, you, you know, you'll just come and visit once a year. To, <laughs> like, probably not. I'm going to say the, probably you get, not. You get what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. I mean. This look, um, it's a, it's not a rumor that he did that. That's 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 going down. But I guess the rumor is is this a sign? Yeah. What does it mean exactly? Yeah. Uh. And and right now we don't know. It's way too early. And I think Brad put that in super perspective for your boy Breezy because I didn't know we had to wait for such a long. Like like there's so much time. It doesn't have to happen. First of all, they can't talk about it right now. And then when they're able to talk about it. They still have to like October to get the deal done or something like that. So this is weird. So I, I personally feel this is just my personal feeling that I, I, I just feel like Jalen Brown isn't finished. Uh, the book has been written, but it's not concluded. And it's not just about him making like a lot of money here. But this is a place where I feel like Jalen Brown sees history and he can be a part of that. And being part of history and part of a legacy speaks volumes. And the type of uh, man that I feel like Jalen Brown is, he loves that type of stuff. And so I'm I'm hoping that he sticks around, he gets his bag, and, you know, he gets better, he progresses, he's entering his prime, and it, it can only get better. That's why I can't see us trading Jalen Brown for Damian Lillard or, or one of those guys. Because, yeah, we'll get, we'll get a good season, possibly. but we we can probably we can five more years with JB like as long as you can get him to agree to the contract that's the only caveat right cuz your right. window does get, your window gets a lot smaller if it's Dame Lillard you probably get three or four windows with just that duo of him and Tatum see what i'm saying which is yeah. a great window but, but he's could older have longer. Yeah, yeah he's much older he's 33 going on 34 and he's a great i love dame like as a player love him. he's great love him. but I don't know. I think if they were to ever do any kind of shakeup, I'd probably want to try and get like an elite big man. Um, and the only elite big man that I would like is JoJo. So if you can, or Cat, then that's yeah. it. I think either of those is possible, but I think it depends really? on what's going to happen with Philly. I, I think one bad season in Philly, or, you know, if James Harden truly leaves, I don't know. Maybe JoJo gives us some thought. Maybe Joel and B. Oh, about I see stuff. what you're saying now. Okay. But you never, you never know. I mean, it's not like uh, no, none of that stuff is guaranteed and set in stone, right? Correct. I mean, and I think that's a, that's when you're making any kind of move in the off season. Like this is why you have to do it with such a heavy hand. You got to really think everything through. 
And I think that's why they're, you know, they're being very careful with the Jalen Brown situation, making sure publicly that they're giving him all the flowers that they can. They've never had anything bad to say from an organizational standpoint. And I don't know, man. I think if they throw him in the back, he'll take it. I don't know. I don't know why they wouldn't. Like, if you're the Celtics, I think it's in everybody's best interest to just ink that deal. It gives him stability. It gives him that safeness of like, okay, I'm under contract, so I'm going to get paid. No matter what, I'm going to get paid. And like, from from a Celtics perspective, you're not risking a player walking away in free agency. You're not going to have this like big old storm cloud hanging over the season because that's what happened with Kyrie. You know, that in particular, I think kind of ruined things for that whole season where you're like, is Kyrie happy? Is Kyrie going to leave? Like, da 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 da. And we've kind of already dealt with that this past season. So I think mm-hmm. the Celtics aren't going to hesitate to get a deal done. And I, I don't think they're going to do any hemming and hawing on this contract. I think they're going to pay him what he deserves. They're going to give him that $295 million extension. I think they'll do that. I mean, you worry about the rest later. You, you keep the two I, stars happy th- and you go from there. It's so hard to trade an all pro player for some players that haven't made it to that level. I think that's kind of where I see it. Mm-hmm. I, and I get, listen, I know people are frustrated with Jalen Brown. I get it. That's fair. There's nothing wrong with being frustrated with the player. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I think we're forgetting the amount of hard work he put to get to where he is and help get the Celtics where they were. Sure. Because there were times he helped carry the team. It's just in that one particular moment. Like that that moment. Like, you know, and, and granted, he was coming off of that. And I'm not saying this is an excuse, but we talked about that that cut, that laceration to him. And we don't know how much that might have played an effect in his ball handling or things like that. But he clearly, we did see this. And tell me if you saw something different. Whenever he would go to the rim, he preferred to lay it up. So that let me know, and he missed some layups, right? That let me know that something on his hand probably still wasn't there. And every time he dunked it, he would come down. Then he ended up dinging up his elbow in that as well. It and they forced like... him. They forced him to his left. Ooh. And they they admitted to that too. Caleb. Oh, Martin, that was part of their game plan. Yeah, okay, which see? tells you everything that you know. Well, the left hand is the same one that was giving him issues before. So the left wrist was the one that he hurt. He hurt. Two, two seasons ago at this point. So he hurt it like right at the end of the year, missed the playoffs. Celtics wow. got bounced at five by the Nets. The tactics are crazy, bro. He, so he worked on his handle leading up to that. And in that season, his handle had looked improved. Then he got hurt in that left wrist. Yes. And I think it's just never been the same since then. So I don't know. Maybe maybe he has to do the same training and regimen that he did before. And I think maybe so. there's a nagging injury. I, I really don't know. I mean... We haven't heard anything about injuries yet. So if it were severe, I think we would know by now. Um, the likelihood that like stuff is under wraps this long is just, I don't know. Yeah, like I'm, I'm not using it as an excuse to his ball handling. But trying it's to find an explanation, I guess. Yeah, you. it's just, it's just more like it just doesn't seem like that's like, one, to, one to four turnovers. That's Jalen Brown, but him to keep forcing it, mm-hmm. it, it didn't seem like it was him, and so like. I wonder if he felt like he could. He, of course, in his mind, he's like, "Yo, I could, I could beat, I could get by this guy." I, I that's that's his, <laughs> that's his mindset, right? But I just think that they rotated so quickly on defense, uh, and and that type of zone that they were playing at two three, and it was just it was just too quick, and he just didn't give up the ball. So, like I said, these are these are growing pains, though, and 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 I'm trying to get people to understand that you're going to get growing pains. With younger players. Now you gotta remember, these guys have been com- contesting since the beginning of their careers. And it just so happened that they had not entered their prime. They're 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 just probably stepping into their prime. I'm talking about Tatum, because Tatum can't close out either. I'm talking about Tatum and Brown. And so, like, imagine when they're seasoned and 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 into their prime. Oh my gosh, they're, it's going to be like lightning and thunder and that's why I don't want us to give up on Jalen Brown. I'm hoping he doesn't give up on the Celtics and I'm hoping the Celtics don't give up on him because it will be something special to watch for the next several years. And I heard Gilbert I don't I don't listen to oh, Gilbert Arenas. But that you had to hear. I know that was the same thing I said until he opened up his mouth and it was just more like he was like, "Yo, you don't break up 
the, those two? You don't. Well, he them. talked about that. I thought you were referring to the other video from him saying like, "Oh, I don't know why the Celtics are." Ruined. He well, trashed. Well, that, he trashed the Celtics earlier in the season. Basically, oh, okay. Well, he. Well, yeah. I tell you what. I tell you what. He still trashed the Celtics, <laughs> but this is what he said. He said, "You don't break up those two. He said, "Listen." He said, "Look at Marcus Smart. Look at Derek White. As good as Derek White was, they still were bottom point, like." bottom of the barrel point guards in the league. Derek White might have been good defensively, but offensively, he was just saying, like, how they're bottom of the barrel. And so then he even talked about Al Horford, and it was just like, oh, all right, technically, three of our starters, and from his perspective, kind of are like, uh, what's the word? Re- help off the bench. Like, so imagine Rotational. If you, uh, rotational. So imagine if you upgraded those three positions with the Tatum and a Brown and then have those guys relief. Like, he was like, the Celtics would be unstoppable. So it wasn't like a bad shot at the Celtics, but he was right. Marcus Smart don't give you 20-plus a night. Derek White may, possibly. Al Horford is not giving you 20-plus a night anymore. It's Not, not anymore, no, no. It, so he, it made sense. And I was like, yo, maybe he's right. We don't have scoring point guards. Derek White has been a breath of fresh air in the playoffs. But all season, it was like back and forth. I didn't know what we were going to get from him. And then you felt like Brogdon helped save the season. And then he got hurt. And then he was a non-factor in the playoffs. It's crazy. It's crazy. So maybe, maybe Brogdon, if he heals and, and gets healthy, maybe he's the starting point guard. Yeah, I won't, I won't go into that because I only think... I, know. I think. I, I think uh, my thoughts on Brogdon are going to be that they'll move him only because I, know. I don't think his value will be any higher than I, what it is right now. And I think that contract wrong. I think yeah. it's a possibility. It sucks we, too. We never know. You, this is the issue, right? A lot of it is just so unknown in terms of outside of the Jays, what you need to do. Um, I, I think, go. I think shakeups are, are around this roster are bound to happen, but they're doing the right thing by kind of getting their ducks in a row. Uh, we saw like something that. earlier. Sean Devaney for Heavy wrote that apparently the Magic might be interested in Grant Williams. Um, he's a restricted free agent, so that's someone that they could go out and sign, but Celtics have the ability to match. To match it, yep. And that's something that the Celtics are also going to have to deal with, too. Jay King also had in an article saying that Peyton Pritchard still is he looking and expected traded. to get traded. So yeah. how does that factor into your plans? Do you, do you start giving J.D. Davison more of a backup role? Uh, there's a lot of questions and I'm hoping that they just, they they're doing again, they're doing the right things by getting the coaching staff figured out first correct, and solidifying that situation with Jalen. And then you figure out the rest there and that's is. kind of where it is. But that's the domino effect. That's how you do it. You get your coaching oh, staff in God. order. Then you take care of the all pro mm-hmm. and then you figure out how to bolster up your roster. If it's a shakeup, then it's a shakeup, but you got to make sure in my, from my perspective that you, you have the two best players on this team. Yep, and you keep them happy. That's really all happy. waters down. I think to. that's where it comes down to. Yeah. And it's, it should be nothing wrong with that because that's what teams do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you prioritize the guys that are key, and those are the guys that you're gonna be trying to keep around. So it, it makes sense. You don't want to do any kind of move that's gonna upset them or the rough chemistry. So I, I think a lot of this will be, you know, consulting the Jays and seeing what happens there after, of course, they figure out this contract situation. But Besides that, you got anything else today before we wrap it up? <laughs> no, man. I'm excited to see what what happens. I, I kind of like what's going on with the Celtics. I don't I don't know when stuff is just going to drop. I didn't know the Sam Cassell news was going to drop. Out. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm kind of excited how like Brad has this nice little system and things are just you know they're giving us nuggets, no pun intended. And so I'm excited. We got some time. Uh, how before we go? How are you enjoying the finals? I kind of don't watch until the second half. Pretty much, uh, exactly what I'm doing. I don't think it's good for my health. I think after looking at the box score a couple times and seeing that like Max Struess and Caleb Martin are having like bad games and like, I'm just like, mm. and then and then uh, uh, Caleb Martin is injured one game and then Tyler Hero comes back like this. You Tyler can't... Hero ain't back yet, still uh, unfortunately. But, 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 but I'm heard, I'm reading that he's supposed to be coming back. Like he, this is... he might, but he's still not ready yet. They're saying the pain's Good. still pretty bad in that hand. But I don't know, man. I'm just I try and I'm gonna probably pay attention I when the series is close why to you over. Say what you said though, this is not good for you. Al. This is no, fun. But, but, <laughs> absolutely but the, not. But good Denver, for you, Denver made some boo boos in Game mm-hmm. Two by leaving their shooters wide open. 
I'll leave it at that. If they didn't watch the Celtics, they might want to go back and watch every game. Just don't leave them wide open. I wouldn't be surprised if they have. (laughs) 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 Well, with that, we're going to wrap it for today. Uh, Thank you for joining this episode of Vitamin C's podcast. Proud part of the CLNS Media Network. And we'll catch you next time. Cheers. Sign up at FanDuel.com slash Boston and make every moment more on America's number one sportsbook.